Okay, class, uh, similar to the last problem, uh, we are going to try to solve for x and y. Well, notice x is over here and y is over here. And you may be wondering, well, I don't really see much color. Which sides are matching up with the other sides? You know, this is really the heart and soul of the problem. The integrity and order of how these letters match up that is what you have to use. This is the key that unlocks all the different types of colors in here. So let me look at the first two letters on the left. That's JL. Well, JL is going to match up with QS. JL is going to match up with QS. Those two sides correspond to each other. So when I start writing proportions here in a second, one ratio equal to another, those are going to be a ratio. What's the next one? LM. LM is matching up with ST. Well, LM is over here, and that matches up with ST right there. And that means there's this last one. That one has to be definitely matched up with that one. So of all these groups of sides in here, these corresponding sides, did anyone notice that those two are the ones that I knew? Well, that's my crutch. So I'm going to write my crutch right now. Well, 4 over 3 is equal to what? The yellow over the yellow. 4 over 3 is equal to the blue over the blue. So let's find the yellow first. doesn't really matter. So 4 over 3 is equal to 3y minus 2 all over 5. So um, now we have to go back to section 7.1 and be able to be very comfortable with solving for this. So when we cross multiply in here, this is going to be 20 equals 9y minus 6. And so I bring the 6 on the other side. It's 26 equals 9y. And this is not going to be a nice number. Well, I got 26 divided by 9. On my calculator, I got 2.8 repeated. 2.8 repeated. So sometimes I second guess myself when I don't get a whole number. But I don't think I've done anything wrong in here. 4 divided by 3 is equal to 3y minus 2 all over um, 5. Across from 20, got 9y minus 6. Yep. So, yeah, that's all good. It's 2.8 repeated. So, let's find the what? The next one. So, the next one is going to be what? The crutch was 4 over 3. And that's going to be proportional to 6x minus 3 all over 2. Once again, we want to cross multiply in here. This is going to be 8 equals 18x minus 9. So this is going to be 17 equals 18x. And I divide both sides by 18 to get rid of the 18. 17 divided by 18, I'm looking at 0.94. And I put a bar on top of the 4 because that is um, that number is repeated. So um, hopefully this helped. Let's move on to a different thing uh, related to similarity and perimeters. So this is a really cool characteristic when we start to analyze similar polygons and their perimeters. Well, notice we have a shape on the left in here, a real simple one, a two, three, four. And I'm telling you, this is similar to this guy in here. I know they're similar because I told you they're similar. And I don't if if you see this as a copy paste where we just copy it and we just slide it over and make it bigger. There is a nice scale factor here. You notice 2 to 6, 3 to 9, 4 to 12. Hopefully you can see that every single side, small to small, medium to medium, large to large, all of them have a scale factor of 3. Well, the analysis of the perimeters, that's the whole point here, is if the scale factor is going to be 3, then their perimeters are also going to have a scale factor of 3 as well. So not only are the sides proportional, but the perimeters are proportional as well. And that's what these, this says right here. If the shapes are similar, then their perimeters are also proportional. So if you just add up 2, 3, and 4, you get the number 9. If you add up 6, 9, and 12, you get the number 27. And this is what we're talking about here. Hopefully you can recognize there's a relationship between the sides and the, and the perimeter. 
Capital P here stands for perimeter. Notice 27 divided by 9 is 3. Notice the perimeters have a scale factor of 3. That's the whole point of analyzing perimeters when we're dealing with similar polygons. So let's take a look at this other example. It just doesn't work for triangles. It works for any polygon in the world. Um, notice if we have a rectangle here and that's 12 and 7, that means the other sides are going to be 12 and 7. So when you get the perimeter of the first shape, that's going to be 38. Well, how can we find the perimeter of the other one? Uh, well, if you notice, the scale factor here is 2. The scale factor here is 2, small to small, medium to medium. So everything gets enlarged by 2. So not only do the sides get enlarged by 2, but the perimeters get enlarged by 2 as well. And so if you take 38 and multiply by 2, you get 76. All right, let's do another problem like this here in the next video, and let's try to finish up.